you, you okay i've st i've frozen myself i started oh, recording you're, I'm frozen. you're all good okay good good unfrozen unbowed and oh. unfrozen that's the, the don't bring your game of thrones into this yeah sorry dead, uh dead and done and it's it yeah okay so <laughs> welcome to freebooters two two freebooters we're back and in serious business baby two, two freebooters in the space of just one year like aren't yeah you, aren't you? and you don't have to do a patreon or nothing for this um <laughs> So, you know, you're welcome. Although, if you'd like to donate to Patreon, uh, just set up a Patreon and donate to it. Yeah. Or Hamish has a co is it Ko fi? Yeah. For this, for the, the peer tube instance. So, if you ever want to support the, the polar bear extended universe, then that's the. <laughs> Speaking of that, the polar bear, uh, polar, whatever mm -hmm. you just said. Um, we just did a podcast. With, well, we started a podcast with Hamish where we're watching an episode of The Expanse and then talking about it. Mm -hmm. Well, the intention is to watch all of the episodes of The Expanse and then talk about them in a podcast. We've just done that. On, it's on Hamish's channel. Um, it was really fun to do. If you like seeing us talking, then there's more of that there. And The Expanse that's... is very good, and we talk about it. Absolutely. Um, do you want to put a link in the little chat? We've worked out how to do the visuals now there'll be stuff that goes on in the beneath us in our little windows down there so it so if we put like a i want to say a link i feel like it's a bit cruel to put a link down there and then expect people to type it out we'll try and work around the hub out. but um it, where do i put it to make it in the chat so in the chat for this in the discord chat, in the discord chat. so okay. Okay, so yeah, you go to video.thepolarbear.co.uk. You don't need the the other stuff. You can find it from from just the the domain. Yeah, but that's the yeah. So we took yeah. I so yeah. I haven't seen it before. Are we going to go with the name Space Virgins, considering that you and Hamish kind of like? I, li I like Space. I like Space Virgins, and then just randomly some something from sci-fi after it. So like the Voyage Home, or yeah, <laughs> yeah. That sounds good. I like that. So yeah. Um, so that'll be, and I think that's pretty much going to be a peer tube exclusive. So if you're watching this on YouTube, you're shit out of luck. Or yeah, just go to the peer tube channel. What, what yeah. are you still doing on YouTube, Granddad yeah. or Grandma or Grand They? Grand They. Um, yeah. So, um, oh, actually, speaking, because we seem to be popping up with podcast ideas left, right, and centre. I had this one the other day, and I genuinely thought it'd be interesting, but I don't want it to sound insensitive, but I know you take this in stride. But it's like, since it's basically been 20 years since you've seen the outside world, what's changed? And like, because it, it, it occurred to me, when we were talking about the, you, you, you don't have to like, go into the shop to buy petrol yeah. anymore like how many things like that are there out and about that have kind of slipped you by? This, this is the thing that I always say to give context, right? The last, the last time I was out and about in the real world, there were no Starbucks. There were no Starbucks. They're not that many Starbucks. We're more of a Costa Coffee kind of country. Which is the good one? Which is, I think it's Costa, isn't it? The, the well, good relatively to because Starbucks have got like intricate structures to avoid paying tax anywhere, where they charge themselves mm. for their own trademarks and buy coffee at them off themselves at a loss and stuff. But the, I think Costa does things a bit more decently right also my my sister i think i think it's costa my sister goes to and she brings me back these little um very dark very bitter chocolate biscuits that are very delicious well i can't speak to the biscuits but i think well i don't know they're they're much of a muchness to, i mean in terms of like in terms of how they taste in terms of coffee oh yeah, um, yeah. i i i don't mind them like i i will i will drink them I've it's more say, expensive this, this is this is a little bit like borderline jingoistic, nationalistic, national pride patriotism, but like it makes me a little bit sad that coffee shops are a big deal here. Like we're a tea country. Come on. It makes me sad that we're moving from coffee to tea. What makes me sad is that fucking Starbucks charge you through the nose for a cup for a large tea. It's something ridiculous, right? Like three sixty or something. Fucking leaves. And it's a pint of hot water with one tea bag in it right so the difference <laughs> in sizing for starbucks is literally only just the size of the cup and the amount of hot water in it they use the same amount of tea bag and i'm pretty sure like the same amount of milk but like the, i mean the amount of milk anyway would be in indistinct anyway 
But I like, like to, I like to imagine now and then, like imagine if instead of Starbucks taking over, because Starbucks is everywhere now, right? It's ubiquitous, mm-hmm. it's global. Uh, Im- imagine like there was there was a, a little English tea shop, like run by you know like an old granny mm-hmm. or something, and that's what became the global franchise. So you had like in America, you had these little like tea shops with like fucking doilies on everything and like everything lacy and like you know, and that that was the global brand where everybody went to use their MacBooks. What that would be such a better world. Yeah. What what, what would it be called? Like it. um like like um, what are these shops called? Oh, well, that, that a lot of them have don't they have like I don't know like I've been to a bunch of pubs. tea shops in my life and I can't think of any. They don't like, have don't... signs. They don't have signs outside, well, do the they? they? When something when something's not a global or, or a brand, a, you know, a franchise, a chain, mm. you know, what you think of it like. My, the local takeaway, your local, you know, like Turkish, mm. whatever takeaway, where they do, you know, kebabs, pizzas, burgers, you know, everything. Mm. I don't know the names of them. Well, all. ours is co- ours is called King Kebab, and I know that one because everyone calls it Kinky. That's just like, it's... <laughs> but That's like, yeah. I mean, I I couldn't like I've been to every single curry house in my town many times. <laughs> However. I, 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 I get them mixed up in my head like I've got to yeah, do yeah. I've got to check the restaurant address on mm. the the, the leaflet. although nowadays when it comes to del- the world of delivery and everything I don't even have to like yeah. I think <laughs> I know them but I know the ones that do the food that I like and now <laughs> so but, but no, also in terms of how much the world has changed that would that would be yeah I, mm. I would be I mean obviously I see glimpses of it because you know I watch TV which mm-hmm. is often set in outdoors. Uh, and, you know, I have friends who sometimes will call me while they're, you know, like my friend Danny mm-hmm. will often call me while she's driving places and going to shops and stuff. So I see I see glimpses of it, but, but that would be very different from being in it. And, yeah, another one is, like, last time I was out in the world, there were phone boxes. Yeah, the, the, they're either, like, uh, defibrillators or, like, um, uh, lending library kind of things. Yeah. Where, like, you can yeah. swap book swaps and things like that. I think that's. I think that's probably more in like larger towns and city. Like here, I think they're just, they're just gone. There's just like a, a a patch of concrete to mark, you know, where they once were. Yeah, and I do agree and, with the and, name. And it's a bit of a shame because um, uh, we, we, I live quite low close to a low security prison. Mm-hmm. Uh, and back in, it's less so now, but back in the day, uh, prisoners would frequently escape. Uh, and you knew you knew a prisoner had escaped when there was a helicopter hovering, you know, circling the village for like yeah. three hours with its spotlight out, like trying to find this. And one time, I, I saw the dude just hiding in a phone box for a good like twenty five, thirty minutes while the helicopter was like, because this was a big, you know, the proper phone box mm. is a red one, and he was just hiding in the phone box for twenty or thirty five minutes. Wow. So I was like, in, in my head, I was like, what can I do to help him? <laughs> like, like the the thing, that must be like harrowing to like to be like <laughs> as hiding from that's like a horror film that's like alien isolation or something yeah. that's just that's so exciting with vid- i've always wanted a video game i and, and some have almost tried mm-hmm. to do this but i want a, a multiplayer video game where i'm being hunted by other people by actual people i want mm. to i want to feel what it's like to be hunted <laughs> Like, kind that, of not in real life. I don't want to actually be hunted. That would be hor- horrifying. But it, you know, as a, as a fantasy, I think it would be incredibly exciting. Oh, I can I can vouch for this. There is a there is. I have played such a game. Well, I've played a few games that come close to it, but I totally understand that there are not enough games about like enough not enough good hide and seek games. Basically, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Because uh, hide so, yeah, exactly. Hide and seek as a kid was yeah, yeah. There was um, there so. You know the game uh, GTA uh, Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. Uh-huh. They had a couple of uh, like that. The, those that era Grand Theft Auto games. The modders are just something else. They yeah. really are, and they did a Grand Theft Auto San Andreas online multiplayer kind of thing, similar to what we've done with uh, Mor- or what we've seen with Morrowind. They've done with Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, and it's so cool because you've got the cars, you've got the open world, um, and. and it, it, like it, it's it is quite the moddable game uh, but you can have car chases with strangers and stuff like that like it's amazing <laughs> and um and someone can just decide actually yeah i'm going to just fucking attack you, you, know, you with my there's, car. Something, there's something interesting about this we, we were talking about the other day when we were playing flat out uh flat out two mm. um because you can do all that in gta 5 right mm. but it feels different 
I think GTA Five has that modern. I wouldn't say young because I don't think it's necessarily about age, but that modern gamer thing of like, don't treat other people like people. Let treat them like NPCs. Like I, this is mm. this experience is for me, you know, and play very selfishly and behave very selfishly. Whereas, because that's an older school game, I think the, the 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 culture is different. It's more like people will people are playing with each other, recognizing, you know. Mm. It was, but also there's something about not you're not meant to or like there's a bit of an element of like making your yeah. own fun like again with the which i that that morrowind i i know i keep just throwing ideas around today but i want to get back into the into the morrowind one those were some of my favorite yeah. videos to edit that i've ever ever done and i think they come out particularly quite well in the short format to be honest i might not yeah. i might i might do like other versions or something like that as well but i think that i'm, I'm, I'm always i'm always up for playing multiplayer more, more morrowind with you yeah but there's something like obviously you it's not a challenging game uh because no. you've got two people doing the one person's mission kind of uh but there's something also, we, about we, we played it for thousands of hours and we know it inside out like we know uh, uh, there, there is no shout. I mean, saying that, we went into that what first cave we went into and got absolutely slaughtered. So it's it's challenging in that sense. We got we got dick. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but there is also something about like this is kind of what I like about a lot of open sourcey stuff and open source in the in sort of when we talk about open source games and stuff like a game with a big modding community, kind of is almost it's very similar. Yeah, you know, no, it scratches sure. a lot of the it's same. Community, it becomes a community driven thing. Yeah. yeah. But they, oh, sorry, I've completely gone off track because um, hide and seek games with uh, with the Grand Theft Auto um, San Andreas, they had various game modes and you could apply to uh, one of them was called like Hunt the Terrorist or something like that. And so the mod, uh, the, ser the server mod could select a, 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 a select a player and for a certain amount of time that player would be would be like targeted on the on the little map yeah. uh, and then everyone else got like a really good bounty if they took out the nominated <laughs> person and if the nominated person survived they would get a a, a, a reward too in in the form of, of currency yeah that's what ideally i'd want my, my ideal hide and seek chasey game hunted mm -hmm. game i, I want to be in the woods i want to be mm -hmm. in woodlands i want to be unarmed and you know with armed people and i can hide you know but it's it's very mm. hard to do in a, in a like in real world in real life that would work very well but in, in mm. a game it's a bit trickier where you've got to i i turn got turn very turn. far just stealing a train and going around the world in a train <laughs> everyone knew where i was but i was just fast we enough to like <laughs> yeah <laughs> although um, i didn't win someone crashed like a plane or a helicopter into me or something and that actually did it, it have was, you ever played it, any of the actual hunting games not not the arcadey hunting games where it's how many deer can you shoot in three minutes but the the ones where you have to actually stalk through the woods and follow tracks and look for spore and all that kind of stuff no i don't think i have i played, uh, I played the hunter years ago mm -hmm. it's gone a bit shit now it's gone very sort of free to play pre premium -y. Oh. Uh, but back in the day it was a bit better and yeah you could spend so you would spend hours tracking like a single deer and you eventually mm. find, you know, you find the deer, you've got your scope on it and, you know, you try and shoot it. And once you shoot it, it's wounded um, and you've got to follow the blood trail and blah, blah. And it's horrific. Like, I, I, I mm. don't think I could do that in real life. Even in the game, you know, I, I, it took me, it took me, like, I really had to psych myself up to actually pull the trigger on this fucking innocent creature. But mm. the process of stalking the deer is incredibly fucking satisfying you know i mean it, it keys into something you know we've been doing for thousands of years right or, or tens mm. of thousands of years um, i mean i i definitely like that that like aspect in games it's one of the things in stealth games i quite like i think it's got that like kind of yeah 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 yeah, yeah. although in some cases one's fight one's flight right <laughs> yeah yeah i'd rather be the hunted than the hunter is the thing i i want to i basically mm. want to play the deer in 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 one of those games with a bunch of people hunting me or you know the fox and mm. you know fox hunting is barbaric and like, it's in, in no way condoning any of these things but um mm. you know in a game yeah i would love it yeah yeah i mean it, it reminds me a little bit of um gary's mod yeah that could yeah yeah prop There's hunt a few... has got a bit of the feeling yeah I, I really quite enjoy prop hunt it's uh and there are those games um yeah. i know there's a game on steam where um uh, I can't remember quite how it works, but uh, I think there's one hunter and a bunch of deer, 
and you are the deer but you're the other deer are real deer and you're a human deer so when you when you walk you get up on your hind legs and walk and your job is to like blend in mm. with the other deer mm-hmm. and convince the hunter that you're oh no i'm a real deer don't shoot, shoot mm. me and it's prop hunters and that yeah there was, the, there was a game back in the day i can't remember where you had to sort of blend into a party oh uh, but uh, had, assassin's creed uh, sorry assassin's creed no 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 this is uh, it was an indie game way back um so, so one player was a sniper look at, looking out of you know a different building oh. into a pod. God, I think I remember. I think I remember like a Jack Septicai video or something about it. I don't know. You don't know it who was, he is, do it you? It was one of those indie games that was hyped for years before it came out, and then I think it came out and nobody gave a shit because it had taken so long, and other games had kind of done what it was doing. But yeah, it was it was mm. a blend again, a blending in game. And I think yeah, I I, mm. I think there's more there's more to explore in those kind of ideas. I think. Yeah, I'd I mean, love like, to... honestly, White, Whitehall Mystery has got you know it's very abstract, but you know you've got that sense of being hunted, right? That well, I mean, it's spot on, really, isn't it? That's the <laughs> it is, yeah. That there is something, there is something. I suppose in the sort of the predator prey kind of dynamic, when you're the prey, getting away is it has it's satisfying because you've got that it's defiance. And it's yeah. like it's like yeah. it's autonomy and gaining control of a situation. It's like if you've got four people chasing after you and you elude them, that's 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 very satisfying. It's actually it's just reminding me. There's an episode of Star Trek: Deep Space Nine uh, where an alien arrives aboard the ship, and this alien is doing suspicious things. Um, uh, Miles Miles O'Brien. I know you're not a Star Trek person, but Miles O'Brien befriends, befriends this alien. And uh, he basically finds out that on this alien's home planet, there are two species. Uh, and one of the species is the hunters, and the other species is the hunted. Uh, and so the hunters turn up, and they're trying to kill this alien that Miles has befriended. Uh, and, and Miles is trying to sort of uh, save them and get them out of this situation. And, and the alien sort of explains to him, no, what, what are you doing? This is my culture. This is what, we, this is what I am. This is what we do. The, you know, I am the prey. That is my, that is my job to... You know, to 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 escape from that role is is not what I want. I want to be the prey and be successful. And you know, and, and it was quite good. It was it was interesting. And that's how that's how you know. Again, I don't want it in real life, but I want to be hunted in a game. Yeah, so yeah well, that's the, that's that's almost the point of games, isn't it? Really? It, it, yeah, know, I, yeah. I I would uh, I I would I'm a super safe driver in real life. Like I, <laughs> you know, like I'm, I, you know, I I definitely err on the side of like. Not necessarily slow, but like I'm, I'm on the extra cautious end of the, the thing, and but like I love a good, I love a good racing game. Like it just gets me going. Mm. Yeah, Even, yeah, I'm not yeah. good I mean, at fiction, them either. Fiction in general, you know, part mm. of its role has always been to explore, explore fantasies that you know we we know would be damaging to do for real. You know, like uh, 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 you know, you know, so much violence. You know, violent movies and stuff. We love, we love watching, and we 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 enjoy the violence, but. Is that recognition? We we don't want to do it in real life, but we do. We want to explore those feelings. Yeah, yeah. Um, should we talk about the the picture that we started with down at the chat chat here? Because um, <laughs> yeah. so when we posted, some someone was watching last week's video, which is, and also thank you for all the views. A lot of people watched it. That's, yeah, that was, that was nice. Um, and so, so we want to, I don't know, lots of good comments, lots of nice comments. And really when it comes to this podcast, that's, that's like all we're really interested in, you know, like hearing, you, you know, some bit of feedback, a little bit of, um, you know, your thoughts on it. Cause obviously we don't expect you to agree with, well, you Linux people, you don't agree with anything that anyone else is <laughs> saying. That's part of the fun of being on Linux. Right. Um, but one of the comments that tickled me was that, um, was was the, they posted that someone posted the meme of the two sisters that are like opposites because I'm bright colored da, 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 and then Drew is there looking like some kind of like who's that bad guy from uh, from from uh, Street Fighter Two like he's like oh, like I'm not, I'm, I'm no Street Fighter oh he he's like someone will know he's like some so big Bison? Soviet general is it Bison. Sorry? Yeah. Uh, oh no, he that that's a character in it, but I don't okay. think that that it might be actually M Bison. 
I was never I was never a Street Fighter person. Uh M M I think M Bison. Uh Yeah, anyway. So yeah, like uh, yeah, 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 yeah. M Bison. That's it, yeah. Okay. Um But yeah, so anyway, um So what I did is I thought that was really cool. Um and I thought it was kind of a kind of a little bit spot on. So yeah. I um uh did a uh I did a uh, I did a pixel art of that same of that same photograph and I thought that's a good that's a lot better you uh freebooters logo than what I was what I was going to do or what I, what we had before I literally did that logo like I don't even know if it was like five minutes before our first episode or something, or even after the episode or something. <laughs> but this one, I, I spent a fair amount of time on it, but I'm learning pixel art. Like I'm still very new in. The I love world. it. I think I think it's a really good drawing. I think you've captured, you know, you've captured the feel of of the original without yeah. slavishly copying it. Um, it's got a lot of life yeah. to it. Yeah, I think that's a good. That's a very good drawing. That is, and I went to art school, so that's that's certified. Yeah, I had I had a little trouble with the uh, the goth librarian's eyes because she kind of had an expression of both seriousness and friendliness that I was not going to be able to capture in pixel art. It, it was it was an almost an almost uh, Mona Lisa like enigmatic like like very blank expression with a very slight smile. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like in limited pixels for sure. It, like they're about to go on an adventure, kind of like. And one of them's excited, <laughs> and one of them's like, "Oh, here we go again." Oh, yeah. So, um, so I thought I tried. I tried. It, I tried to sort of get it as close as I can. Um, the the lady on the left's eyes, I think, took a long time to do, and I finally got them because. Basically, eyes are kind of so difficult because if you if you get them wrong even just a little bit, they look like they've been like hit on the head with a hammer in cartoons, and they're like, <laughs> yeah, you know, they yeah. they just they don't it's something that that's where the uncanny valley sort of cracks open, you know. That's yeah, that's definitely it. And um, but yeah, yeah, I didn't like I kept, I wanted to keep the va the shapes of the, the the picture, but um, but you but like the the closer you get you, like if you there's a there's an element of too not too much realism but too much literalness lit, yeah, you know, yeah yeah uh that that i tried to avoid like like the noses i tried a few different various noses and the trouble is with noses is when you're drawing them with pixel art they look a lot bigger than they they yeah the, you know they, yeah. they they expand themselves a little bit so i kind of was like well i have to do I like I had to do, go in for a bit of a less is more approach. Yeah, with, pic, with like with some things like noses with pixel art is like if you, if you go one pixel this way it's too big, but mm. if you go one pixel in it's too it's you know comically small. So so you've mm. got to you got to just hint at things rather than yeah it's a sketch rather than a uh, a copy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There is a lot of like hinting and suggestion and yeah, uh, it's a little bit. Done, done well. You've got a good eye for it. I'm I'm. I'm relatively happy with that, um, but I, I I suspect in five years' time or whatever, I'm going to look back on this and go, "Wah!" Because when I, you know, my original um, avatar that's something like I think it's like thirty six pixels by thirty six yeah, or something like that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that was that's a lot simpler, a lot more minimalist. Well, the thing is, is, you can get you can get more more sophisticated. Isn't necessarily better. Like like cruder mm. isn't necessarily. Like you look at um, cave drawings at Lasso, you know they're they're com compared to uh, like a Renaissance painting, they're incredibly crude, but they're still mm. in incredibly beautiful. They're not worse; they're just you know of, yeah. of a different form, it's still very beautiful. Yeah, and in fact, sometimes you can see art that's done by like every stroke has had a purpose and nothing is wasted yeah. like sometimes yeah. it's it's the ability to to make something using as little as possible you know a negative yeah. space and all that kind of stuff that is the impressive uh thing um mm -hmm. i yeah i see that in a few like watercolor exhibit uh, uh, exhibitions where it you know rather rather than 
explicit technical detail. They've just gone for suggestion. Mm. Also, yeah, my, my camera is... Watercolor, watercolor is incredibly... Like, cause I, 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 went, I went to art school, I painted. Um, <laughs> and when I used to paint, it was more like... Okay, my dad was good at watercolor, and he could do that. Like you know, you plan what you're going to do. Watercolor has to be planned. You can't you can't hone away at it. So mm. you just yeah, a very, a very broad brushstroke, and it's like oh, that's cl- that's stormy clouds, you know, in one kind of like uh, thing. Whereas when I painted, no, it was it was honing, and you know, it's almost carving the painting out. Uh, yeah. So like oil oil paints can kind of do that. Um, mm. Yeah, I could never, I could never with sketching. I could, I could kind of do it sometimes. I like sketching with ink um, yeah. and a brush. That was kind of cool. Yeah, I um, yeah, I th- I think pic- uh, pixel art seems to be one that I've l- just landed in because you can you you do have the you can chip away at it with like with impunity. You can you know you yeah. can yeah even you can sometimes what I have done is forked it as it were, like where you just you go <laughs> yeah, all yeah, right, yeah. you know I don't I want to take it in a direction I don't know if it's a good idea, so you. You make a fork in a road, you know. It's uh, yeah, which you absolutely cannot do with oil paints. No, no, it's uh, horrible to work with. Yeah, I, I think to be honest, it's one of those things where I've never felt like I'm a good drawer, um, especially when it comes to the things that are notoriously that are known to be difficult, i.e., <laughs> faces and hands. You know, I'm and hands. Or, yeah, hands. hands just. Oh. You get hands for some reason. You get hands slightly wrong, and it looks like a fucking mutant. Well, even AI can't get it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. This is what? Yeah, why? What is it about hands? I mean, we're very keen into faces for obvious reasons, right? Rec- recognizing the emotion that the other person is feeling was incredibly important to our evolution, right? Hands. Mm-hmm. I don't know. There's not. I don't know what the easy explanation for hands is, really. Why? Why do we me- need to be so good at recognizing? Yeah, I don't know. Because you can get you can get other parts. You know, you can get the the legs, the shoulders, the knees, the elbows. You can get you can get that quite wrong and have it still look right, but hands mm. slightly wrong, or, or or slightly not not wrong because you you can exaggerate. You know, you can do like very elongated hands, or you know, you can stylize the hands, but they've still got to be a plausible you know uh, arrangement of fingers. Or, yeah. yeah, yeah, it looks wrong very easily. And the size as well. This one, you know, it's yeah, yeah, and perspe- uh and also yeah, like perspective, like hand, uh, like I think the thing is, 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 like obviously my hand, my hand is not bigger than my head like that, but like if I drew that, that would look bizarre. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, yeah, I think you can draw that and it look right because it looks right. But again, persp- I, persp- new artists. There's a problem hmm. with the problem with art. There's a problem with learning to draw. When people decide they want to learn to draw, and then you know they watch or read tutorials about how to draw, and then you know you learn about perspective and proportion and things like that, and you end up drawing in a very sort of regimented, boring way. I would mm. say forget forget all of that. The best the best way to learn to draw is to sketch. Just sketch a lot. This is what this is what they teach you in art school, and they're they're right. Just get a sketchbook and sketch everything you fucking see, and, and you'll you'll keep you'll 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 then develop your own style which will be way more interesting than like because part oh this is this is mm. this is real old man um <laughs> rant but everything's starting to look like fucking anime like every new drawing i see by like a new artist like every person looks like fucking anime and people in real life are starting to look like anime it's like fashion is everything's converging towards fucking anime and i hate it uh, the, those eyes are anime. <laughs> You've not got you, you, you. Your earlier drafts were more anime. This is this is far less anime, and it's, this it's far less yeah. This, this is fine. This is this is. The, but anime, anime is is. I see. I know exactly why. Because anime is kind of like a good crutch to you know like because it's minimal. It's minimalist, but like in in yeah, in a way that's like easy way to make something recognizable. But it's becoming yeah. like a dominant. The dominant aesthetic and i don't think it's a very interesting aesthetic. and i'm not to say that there has been no anime that is aesthetically interesting that's not my point but it's it's one aesthetic amongst many and mm. to default to it is just it's boring like find, find something else please is that is this kind of like when something's easy it becomes less interesting like um you can with like ai images all you got to, I, 
there's nothing interesting about AI images, right? Like it's just you've just put some words into a machine and the machine has spit it in yeah. the chat. Like the amount of like yeah, there's been a couple of times where I've been in a chat and somebody's gone, yeah. look at this drawing I did. What do you think? And I'm like, oh, it's very good. Like it's a very competent drawing. And they're like, oh, I used AI. And like immediately, I'm like, well, that's far less interesting then. Which yeah. in itself is interesting because why is that less? It's the same image. What? Why because... do I like? Or if somebody hadn't created it. Okay, it's like it's like you know when Jesus appears in a piece of toast. When what? Sorry, Jesus appears in a piece of toast. Jesus, 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 the, the Lord and Jesus. Savior, Jesus. You know those those like stories about where Jesus. Oh, is it, right, 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 right. I get yeah. Or you cut open a tomato and it's like in a rosary or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's it's like um, there's no. Yeah, there's no skill in it. It's not like saying, "Oh, you're good at faces." If Jesus appears in your um... <laughs> <laughs> no, because that is that is always interesting when Jesus appears on a piece of toast. It's like, oh, that's cool. More so than AI, I guess. But then More uh, you so know, than AI, yeah, yeah. Um, it's, I mean, it's because I think I think as humans, we've got to think about cheating, and AI feels like cheating. If you if you show me an, an image that you created with AI, AI versus you showing me an image you created by drawing it, I mm. feel like you cheated. Again, but again, the, but the, but what's underneath that is more interesting. Like, why do I fuck? Why do I care if the images are the same? Why should I? Why should I attach more value to one than to the other? And so, when you get right down, this is a bit trite, but like when you get right down to it, you know, pens and pencils are tools. Uh, mm -hmm. AI is a tool for creating an image. It's just a more sophisticated mm -hmm. pencil in a sense. So why why should uh, philosophically why should I attach more value to one than the other? I always think about this because to me, it's a little bit like when you've got adobe tools that are often considered the best in the industry and they've got things like ai take someone out of a, a photograph like yeah. they've got and um i'm like well if you can edit a photograph like a lot of times it used to be the case in like old internet culture there would be like photo editing competitions or things like that where you'd you'd you know, you take random photos from the internet and you'd, and you'd merge them to make a joke or a meme or a thing, like an image, Yeah. you know, all, all various kinds of things like that. That, it not, there was an element of impressiveness to certain, like, yeah, yeah. Uh, to, to some photo editing, which now, with, like, the various Adobe tools and the various this and that tools, even manipulating an image so that there's something that's, like, in your mind but then sort of manifests itself on the page. Yeah. Like, th that's... Uh, that that so like smooth stroking on brush strokes you know is that is that cheating because or is it just an age exactly, well exactly like, yeah yeah i mean a, a pencil itself is that cheating versus you know charcoal is charcoal cheating versus mm. you know ochre and your and your fingers um mm. and I, I, i've always felt we've this has come up a surprising amount when we've talked but um i, I kind of disdain photography i see mm. the way we look AI is kind of cheating. I've always felt kind of, kind of that way about well, photography is easy. You just the thing was there. You just pointed, and, and I know. I of course I know there's more skill in it than that. There's far more skill in it than that. But it's still a hell of a hell of a lot easier than drawing or painting, and therefore I respect it less. <laughs> Which, if you're a listening to this, I I know this is wrong, but it's 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 how I feel. Well, no, you're not wrong, and I can say that because I do. I I technically part of my my job is is photography. Yeah, yeah. Although photography for reporting is 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 a little bit more to do with archiving rather than artistic expression, the the two aren't obviously, you know, the, the two are linked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like my job is really to record what's what's going on. A lot of times, so, so does, it, does it just come down to we respect what we respect about a work of art to some extent? I'm not saying this is the only factor, mm. but we respect. Uh, the skill and work, the, the effort and, and labour that went into it. Is that part of the value of a piece of work? I think it is, to be honest. Um, yeah. For example, how we appreciate it is, yeah. One, well, one of, uh, some of my favourite photographs that I've ever taken, I still had to go to the place. Like, I still had to... Um, be a lot of a lot of the great like a lot of the greatest photographs a, a photograph exhibition in a gallery is very different to a, an art like a painting art uh, exhibition in a gallery so the yeah. last uh, photo exhibition i went into was a it was a lot more historical like in its nature it was uh, a lot of photographs from the 20th century 
things like a lot of photographs of everything from Beatles, Elvis, Marilyn Monroe to, you know, early cases of uh, nuclear waste being disposed of irresponsibly and, um, you know, the, the ABBA fan disaster and... Um, all all you know like it just had mo like snapshots in history uh many of those photographs were not like impressive in terms of how uh in terms of their i don't know how, their makeup their lighting or anything like that they were they were purely uh, documentary mm, uh n not purely documentary but it wasn't pretending not to like so for example one photograph of marilyn monroe was her getting ready to go to go out and because she was so such a like a person that would only really take photographs in the limelight it was mm. quite a a lesser known sort of side of marilyn mm. monroe that this mm. photograph mm. was so i think documentary is part a lot of the time is part of photography but that's just uh that's just my my perspective yeah well, well, that, well, that when, I, when i'm down on photography i recognize there's a, a, an enormous amount of skill goes into photography mm. uh, because i know that because you know I, I did photography you know i've done photography and i'm bad at it i don't have those skills so i can see you know i i'm aware of their lack but i still for some reason don't respect it as much as drawing and painting or sculpture or whatever but there was um there's not movement in the i think i think around about the 60s um called mm. photo realism um mm -hmm where they uh would would literally they would copy photographs mm -hmm. um and they usually use airbrushes and the the end result looks exactly like a photograph it is it is un it's the indistinguishable from a photograph and i also have very little respect for that even though because this is about the labor thing there's a ton mm. of labor and skill that's gone into that but I don't respect it because the other half is is lacking, like the the artistic sort of the the, the discernment, the um, creating a beautiful image. You have just copied. Mm -hmm. You've you've done the job of a photocopier. Okay, I, I I've got I, I've got a fun game. All right, I've just uh -huh. looked up. I've just looked up some of my favorite photographs. <laughs> yeah. Right. So you roast. It's basically it's roast me, right? Are these your photographs? These are ones I have taken. Right. Um, so yeah, I like, like, I like your photographs, I. Well, I'm just okay. So, I, but but from also like from a talent point of view, uh huh. Right. So like you know, I, 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 how much how much how much praise do you think I I'm I'm deserving of this, right? <laughs> so, okay, okay. So this is one. It's a nice moment, nicely framed, and like the the old lady in the background without her. That would be a much worse <laughs> photograph. It's, uh, she makes it, right? Okay, so on this particular photograph, a or lot of that... that a sign saying no noodles coming out of her head. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but this... See, I like this for a lot of reasons, right? Like like the things you pointed out. Like, noodles! <laughs> <laughs> um, so, in terms of... So, I, I did not get lucky in terms of, like, there's an explosion there... With that cam, with that camera, I used a fast, uh, continuous shoot. Yeah. yeah. So, um, and I picked the best of, you know, it was taking a photograph, like taking like five a second or something like that. So it just goes. Duh, 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 duh. So there's no talent in. Uh, there's no photographic talent in that. No, I think I might have done. This still is. It's knowing what, knowing that that something about that is going to make an interest. The fact that you use the rapid thing, I don't, I don't think that matters. I think it's knowing that there's something about this that is going to make an interesting image. Yeah, but you, I'll also. It, it's it's composition and, and and its mood and it's you know it's a bunch of things that I don't really understand because like that that's a better photograph than any photograph I've ever taken. Really? I because I yeah don't think I, I'm, I'm really bad. At it. Was, I took one good photograph that was um, a pinhole photograph where it, which yeah is kind of a, a whole different thing. It's more like paint. Okay. I am, but... uh, I've got another. I've got another one here. Before you move on from that one, part of what oh, makes yeah. that image interesting is that the fire almost mm -hmm. looks fake. Because there's no, uh, there's no uh, like bloom or glare because you because you take. I assume it's a very fast shutter speed. Yeah. So you're getting none of the sort of luminosity of the fire. There's no glow coming off the fire. The fire almost looks superimposed. 
but you know it's not because of the kind mm. of photograph it is and the, and the setting and that makes it that slightly jarring and something jarring always pulls us in you know mm. I, I i mean the color i you know i, I played around with the colors so mm. i don't know if that so so it's not a pure like no it it's never not is, though. No, oh no, it never is. You know, like I the color, whether you do it or whether the camera does it, because it's the default that doesn't matter. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I, I quite like filters. I kind of like the vibe that they give. I like yeah, yeah. there's a. Was this taken with a phone? Nope. This was taken with a a camera. The lens on it was uh, that would have been about oh I don't know like two hundred millimeter lens. I think yeah so another, you... another thing that would have made this photo less interesting because you could have you could have used a uh, narrow aperture so that the um the background was blurred and the main figure in the front was in focus right mm -hmm. which if you were doing it more documentary style that's probably what you'd do but that in this case I think the 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 long uh, depth of feel makes it more interesting and the fact that the people they're slightly out of focus but the people in the background you can still see them you can see their expressions and stuff i think that helps it well yeah yeah so the ne this next one is a little bit more ab not abstract but it's not it's less documentary oh that was lovely yeah i've seen that before yeah, it's just yeah. Cute. that's almost um I don't mean this insultingly, but you can, mm -hmm. that could be in a stock a stock photography library. I know, uh, yeah, no, I totally like, not in a bad way. Yeah, it's just it's very it's an easy image, but it's nice. Yeah, well, that one again was kind of purely by luck. It's the same camera, but it, that camera does not do so well in low light conditions. Mm. So every so so the light of the lantern gave gave you a crisp outline of the heart but everything else was was blurry and that was that's kind of part, that's part of what's nice about it as well it also makes it a little bit a little bit more painterly yeah yeah that's yeah cool. uh what are the oh well okay so this is one that i like it a little bit more from an artistic point of view but i don't know if i'm actually happy about the colors but that's the one uh, that's the one i was waiting for that's got a little bit as you, you, you've got a few that are like it's a little bit you know what people call accidental renaissance yeah 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 which they really mean accidental baroque uh what 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 people what people think of as uh, renaissance painting is really baroque painting Rena renaissance painting was very rigid and very um static baroque is where the emotion comes into it um yeah no i love that i love that yeah it's just straightforwardly got that kind of yeah that baroque appeal yeah draw to it yeah and that was that one's from the 2019 general election so that was like five prime ministers ago <laughs> <laughs> um five. maybe not maybe more i don't know um, well four prime ministers and um oh god i forgot i've ruined my own joke what's her name liz trust the cabbage four, four prime ministers and liz trust <laughs> uh um Okay, this one uh, is a bit interesting. Uh, I don't know. It might not be. Right, so this one is quite heavily edited. Um, I don't know which one to do exactly. Oh, uh, oh. Okay. That's nice. Yeah. So yeah. does that... It's I don't mood. even know. That's mood. It's mood and composition there that made that... it, right? Yeah, that's a little bit like accidental Wes Anderson. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um Oh, oh, one, one of my favorite photographers, I can't actually remember his name, but um he he's one of those who just like sort of broke all the rules of photography, of art photography. He, mm. I think he got he got quite famous, but he would he was just a very working like lower working class um kid and he just took pictures of his family in their working class house. Mm. um in sort of like kind of odd situations and and it breaks all the rules of photography and it's it's very very good i love doing stuff like that i i remember when when youtube was like new and exciting and we didn't know what it like what it was right so there were some people that were abiding to very cinematic rules mm. and now that seems kind yeah. of weird and now like there's a post youtube video thing in the form of vertical video tiktok shorts instagram which is an entirely 
progressed art like media form beyond beyond that uh where yeah i, I think it's in, yeah because early on early on in youtube people were like what is this and like you say some of them were going quite cinema, cinema cinematographic um but now what youtube is settled on on is just like a tv aesthetic which is the worst of all worlds it's fucking horrible and boring and if i wanted tv i would have stuck with fucking tv i want not tv stop making tv and when i say tv i mean presented shows i don't mean dramas mm. and you know, i mean uh, you know like fucking every, everything looks like everything looks like a breakfast fucking tv or yeah. children's tv um but yeah and but stuff has gone to like with tiktok and with shorts and everything stuff has gone towards so there was a there was a, a soviet artist called ziga vertov Mm -hmm. um not his real name they all had pseudonyms um and his 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 big thing was called uh, kino eye and what he imagined was everybody in the soviet union or everybody in the soviet world would be given a camera that was his dream and they would all take like just five minute a five minute like uh, video of their life like uh, you know this this is this is my life today and then the, these would all be sent to like the local region and the best of those would be sent to like the capital and these would be shown on cinemas so everybody in the Soviet Union, when they went, to, you know, they get to see their feature film as well, but um, they go to the cinema and, and for like, you know, half an hour, they'd see snapshots of life around the Soviet Union, like, you know, as a way of, you know, connecting people and humanizing things and like, mm. and that's literally TikTok. It's literally what we've done. There's more talking to camera than just showing people your life, but it, it, it's essentially, we, we have, yeah, uh, 100, yeah, 100 years later, we've, we've realized uh, Ziga Vertov's uh, dream of Kino Eye. <laughs> I it was probably this country that did it. <laughs> yeah, uh, and I I mean, yeah, I to I'm totally with you there. Like I I feel like it's a bit of a shame that YouTube almost kind of fumbled this in in the way that they did because yeah, uh, you know I I I like the I like the, all like I, that's why I think about with PeerTube right where like PeerTube can be something that isn't just the, another place for YouTube. Mm -hmm. Mm. Uh, it, it it needs to have something distinct, and um, and I, well, think, I think that taking the, money, taking the money out of it. So, I mean, people can still have mm. Patreons and so on, but YouTube now this has come up mm. before. YouTube, even people starting a YouTube channel now, you can't help but think, you know, maybe I'll be really mm. successful, and then like, how do I get successful? So let's let's do mm. all the things that will make me successful, which is part of what homogenizes everything and makes it the same. Whereas the yeah. people on YouTube, they're, they're necessarily less interested in money. Then they're far more likely to doing it just for the love of it, and I think yeah. that's going to affect the aesthetic and make it more like you know, like we do. We lo we don't care. It's lo-fi. Mm. It's turn your camera on, start recording, right? Yeah, look at I mean, it's not like a YouTube. Oh, can I just? I've been thinking, <laughs> sorry, this is a slight tangent, but I've been thinking about it a lot recently. Is like the you know the you know the average YouTuber sort of background. Yeah, with all the fucking. The fucking dolls and the toys and the lights and the RGB. No, you, you, yours is nothing compared to. Like it's toys, fucking every. It's it's toys. This is Christopher toys, Johnson. Toys. <laughs> and like it's that hype. Why? Why are we leaning into in, in particularly in this time? In, you know, with climate change and, and and austerity. Why are we leaning into like hyper consumerism as the default aesthetic? Uh, and I've been, I've been, I've been sort of. Re I'm sure this is overblown, but I've been sort of reading about how Gen Z people are rejecting consumerism to a large extent, and they're just buying less. And, you know, and obviously in the mainstream press, this is categorised as a problem. But I, won't, I can't wait for Gen Z that aesthetic to become, you know, just more sort of like, you know, in the truth, like austere and like, why mm. am I buying all all this fucking useless junk? And because in the background, it's always it's just cat. It's just yeah. rooms full of fucking toys and stuffies and fucking plushies and just at just utter fucking waste that's killing the fucking planet is it is it was it was it one of those things where it was originally supposed to be ironic and then kind of got out of control and then no, stopped I because it was ever ironic these people the kind of people who get successful on youtube because it's like they're into like you know nerd culture which apparently means collecting every fucking doll and lego and just like just shit just i mean shit my room's a fucking disgrace, but I'd rather have this than fucking dolls and fucking just the, the just the, the actual absolute detritus of capitalism, useless plastic fucking things. I'm getting well, that's very it. angry. It's ner it's nerd culture as uh as as permissed by by capitalism, right? 
yeah. you know, like it's it's like the girl boss thing. It's like mm. uh, you know when when women started having disposable income, that's when Walt Disney yeah. started featuring the 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 girl boss heroine and all this kind of yeah. stuff. Yeah. You know, it's I I, it, I know it's very cynical to say, but it's like it's money. It's always it's always about the money. It's, it's it's so depressing because nerd nerd culture was we you know nerds were the ostracized the weird the weirdos the people you know who the more sincere people whose sincerity was embarrassing to other people you know mm. autistic or like just people who didn't fit in socially and it, and it was never a commodified commoditized thing and now it is seen predominantly as this oh you're a nerd that means you're into Star Wars Star Trek Game of Thrones like like you have to be into all of them like it's not. It's just this packaged fucking container now, rather than well, I, like you got to be into it. Like nerd, nerd culture overlaps. With, I don't. I fucking hate anime. Like if you love anime, great. I'm glad that you enjoy it. I personally, I fucking hate it. I don't understand nerd stuff. Like so, culture exists in in uh, you know production and consumption, right? And the cycle mm. sort of thereof, right? The like, it Within feels like that's, that's yeah, awesome. yeah. But it feels like with capitalism in particular, there is so much more emphasis on the consumption than the production, right? Like when when you think about the capitalistic idea of nerd stuff, you like you say, you list off the plastic tat, the the star, the the shows, the and all that kind of stuff. Enjoy the things you buy, but, yeah, yeah. But like, there's a whole, of course, world of nerd culture out there that is is it, you know, like it's fixing up old computers and it's mm. uh, it's le it's doing math yeah, if problems. You said, if you went like when you th so, I don't know how to frame this, but like if if you Google nerd culture, you don't get mm. that, which is the true nerd culture. You get mm. the tat consumption. That's nerd. Yeah. That's what's thought of as nerd culture now. Yeah, and it is. It is a part of this. Is more free. This is more um, uh, Dagoth Hour than freebooters. But mm. it's that. It's that. Um, it's the. It's the recession of all other forms of um, ex like politics has receded to mm. nothing. Like politics has been replaced by culture. Um, uh, like self self expression and self realization has been ex uh, replaced by uh, consumer culture. So the o the only way we can express ourselves. Uh, even politically now is through our consumer choices. I think I think this, I've mentioned that before, but yeah, we've we've essentially been reduced to we are brands first of all, and secondly, the, our only mode of expression is our consumer choices. Yeah. So, but but the but but to extend that, the the sort of the the converse can also be true, like. To, to choose to live a lower consumption lifestyle is genuinely consequential though or, or as in like it's it's it, it's it's still a st that's a valid statement right like if you're if you're deciding to yeah. to um it's gonna, it's gonna it's gonna you know you or i choosing to consume less is gonna do fuck all to alleviate uh, climate change mm. because it's that's a production problem but, but i mean it's, you know if you follow that through it's a production problem because people mm. consume so much so it's you know obviously there is a link there but it would take everybody mm. consuming less but if that's if that's the way gen z is genuinely going or at least a mm. decent proportion of them then you know fucking godspeed to them you're, you're on the right track yeah and it's also it's symbolically it's relevant mental well being mental yeah. and social well-being because we aren't just consumers we aren't just what we've been reduced to by capitalism we are more than that and we should see ourselves as more than that. yeah um which actually interestingly enough um has kind of is sort of is is one of the reasons why or is sort of in my sort of what i'm thinking about like now i've decided that like i don't all almost i'm kind of at that that point where all branding is bad almost like when it comes to like drawing up a thumbnail for for youtube videos and stuff like that i've decided to like basically just make each one afresh not not use a template yeah. not use any kind of yeah. just like no uh, no reject uniformity because it just leads to on, under our present conditions it just leads to bad places yeah it leads to bad places it leads to in, like it's almost like so so like branding is fluff it's additional stuff that you don't mm. need it's a little but also it says something 
that I'm not entirely sure what it is, but it's something I don't want to say. <laughs> I mean, like... back, back, if you go back to its origins, branding is is the maker's mark, right? It's it's a particular company or person made this, therefore I associate certain qualities with it, which, mm. you know, you, you know I, I know that this person makes good kitchenware, so, you know, I get this person's kitchenware. Uh, but I mean that 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 can't be applied anymore because everything everything's so globalized and 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 uh, decentralized that like you, you can't mm. say you can't even say like Nike you know Nike make decent quality stuff because it's all it's all it's made in different places by different people under different you know yeah uh, so it doesn't yeah it doesn't it is now a brand has become dissociated from any material anything yeah yeah it's and. A brand uh... that you, Right, say, but it's the brand you're thinking. It's the brand you're paying for. You know. Obviously. Yeah, yeah. But you were saying something about like how I mean, you were using it in the context of YouTube, but I think that it kind of works beyond it. Where you were saying about the two approaches to like sort of dealing with a platform like YouTube, and 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 one is to embrace what the algorithm wants mm. to play its games to 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 feed it, as it were, and then the other is to completely go off uh, off piece, do your own thing, and expect it to be the, almost like the trailblazer or the the novel thing yeah. that yeah goes against the grain because because all trends started yeah yeah you've also got to yeah. I mean, you got to recognize if you know if you go against the algorithm and become successful then the al algorithm will expand to to contain what you do and mm. then that will inform what the what the norm is so you're kind of trapped either way. The best, the best thing is to get out from under the thumb of the algorithm altogether. But yeah, I, yeah, mm. I, I, yeah. I wish, I wish people would just because we've we've replaced creativity with sort of mimicry. Like, I want to make a YouTube channel, therefore it has to have this form, rather than thinking I want to make a YouTube channel. What would a YouTube channel that I would make look like? Mm. And make you know, allow it to come from you, rather than to come from you know this this packaged idea of what that is. Yeah, and what do you want to say? What do you want to put out yeah. into the world? You know, and how do you want to say it? And how do you want yeah. to present it? It's not like Mr. Beast, which is like his goal is just to to be viral at, yeah. at every opportunity. Yeah. You know, I I I hired a, a homeless person for a dollar and a homeless person for ten thousand dollars. Who's better at fighting? What what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the pure dystopian. You know, it's absolutely yeah, yeah. I I bet that there are not many people who watch um, Mr. Beast and Freebooters, but if you are, let us know. Oh my God! Yeah, there's an intersection there. Or, the, or anybody anybody who watches Mr. Beast unironically and also watches Freebooters. You can't watch Mr. Beast ironically. He's kind of there's no. I mean, I I honestly didn't hear about him until about a month ago, and and when I did, I I was curious, so I went and watched the video. And I was like, Jesus fucking Christ, people watch this. <laughs> this is kids, like this isn't is it? Slop. This is it's absolute slop. It's kids though, isn't it? That's the thing. It's not even but it's not even I mean, yeah, I mean we watch Is it kid kids, when we were kids, but... I, I mean I, I well I played video games. I, I, mm. uh, yeah. I, I I feel like in a lot of ways I sort sort of missed out. Um but also uh going so anyway, going going back to the art thing. Um, mm. because the, uh, so we've got the, um, so I did the, so, so the new Freebooters pixel art logo, uh, there it is. Um, mm. but I did it on something called Pixelrama. And I think this is a good, a good segment because I've been doing, well, while you're uh, spieling about Pixelrama, I'll still be able to hear you, but I'm going to go for a pit. Okay. Fantastic. So Pixelrama is a, uh, uh, what is it? It's a well, it's a pixel art program that you can get on Steam. You can get it on Itch.io, um, and you can actually just play it through the browser. Um, so I'll I'll try and find the the website for it. Uh, Pixelrama. There we go. And I'll put it in there so you can like presumably copy it down or something. There we go. Um, so. What I liked about this is that it was actually very easy to do to do pixel art. Basically, you can have like a reference image that you lay down if you want to use like bits of a reference image, or or if you want to just basically do a uh, a pixelized version of of a photograph or something like that. Uh, so a lot of the time, because I need help, uh, you know, like lots of different shapes, 
and and, and reference photos and stuff are quite are quite useful for that. Uh, you can do uh, a couple of frames of animation, but I've not moved on to that yet. Uh, there is also um, it's free on itch. You can download it for I think it's Windows, Mac, and Linux, and you uh, you have to pay for it on Steam, but you know, but it is open source. And um, it's pretty new as far as I can tell, but it's very easy to get started on and I have just enjoyed playing around with it. It's nice that it's open source and it's not, yeah, it just looks like pixel art, you know, the basics for if you're starting out. I mean, maybe, maybe you can use it if you're an expert as well, but it's, it's the basics and it's a very clean interface. It looks like mm. a, good, a good application. Uh, yeah. Even the AUR as well, if anybody's on Arch. Oh, fantastic! Like, it's, give, money, yeah. give money to it if you can, but I, I, it, the, having it as it's a very simple kind of interface that it doesn't seem like it's trying to do too much. Mm. Um, I don't, yeah, like I wouldn't, I wouldn't have a clue if like a professional pixel artist would uh, would would find my, find value in it. But it seems to it, have all. Does it have layers, right? Does it have layers? It has. It has I mean, layers. You if you can put a pixel of whatever color you want down, and you have layers, what what more? What more? You can is you can do pre pre pal. You got you got pre selected palettes. You got you can make your own palettes. You can do color wheels. You you know it's all got yeah. that kind of stuff. Um, my my camera's fuzzy and up. So I'll just reset that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I mean, I, I don't know if, if it's better than any of the others. I, I have done uh, pixel art on GIMP before, but obviously GIMP is not designed not for it. it. Yeah, it's yeah. not set up for it. So you can do it with GIMP, but... Um, I mean, you can do it with any, any any anything that can edit an image can do pixel art. But yeah, you, yeah, if you're doing specifically pixel art, you want something geared to that. Kind of. That's, doesn't that make it one of the more inclusive art forms? It really doesn't take that much to... I think it is. Yeah, I think it's one of the. That, that's why it's used in games so much. And I, I've talked before about my sort of disdain for pixel art. But when I when I say that, I'm, what I really have a disdain for is everything looking like a SNES game. Like mm. that's where culture stopped. Like I, I'm not against pixel art. It, you know, it's just a way of drawing. It's just drawing, really. The fact that you're using fewer pixels is kind of beside the point. Mm. <laughs> it's that particular style that I'm I'm bored with. Yeah. What about cross stitch though? Uh, cross yeah, cross stitch is great. Yeah, cross stitch yeah. is just mom, analog mom pixel to, art. My mom used to do a lot of cross stitch. She enjoyed that. Mm. I could do the I could do the freebooters logo in. That'd be cool. Yeah, I love that. It's like it's not a design logo. It's a photograph that I just decided one day to. <laughs> yeah, to yeah. Pix, pix, yeah. Pixel art. We're gonna when we, when we get you know when we get hugely successful, and we get a deal with whoever podcasts get deals with. Are they going to come yeah. after us for copyright? Yeah, yeah. They, um, they, they, they. Actually, they're they're um real sisters, and they have, yeah. um, yeah, like the how I don't know how much that's kind of engineered for social media. Do you think it was? That seemed that seemed that seemed genuine. Think... Me. but yeah i mean you never know but it seemed genuine it's just a couple of sisters where one of them is a fucking disgusting hippie rainbow fairy and the other one's the cool goth librarian mm -hmm. yeah it's i like is it a new meme is it is it um because i've seen a no few i people... think it was like i can't remember actually but i think it, i think it was a good few years ago like ten years ago, that we, seemed we to be like a lot of this. we missed a lot of this not being on Twitter. It was big on Twitter for you know a week as these things are, and you know not being on Twitter, I never saw it at the time. Ah, uh, I've I've only ever seen it on the Feddy. Yeah, yeah. But did oh. you see it for the first time when it was posted in response to our? Yeah, yeah. That was yeah. that was literally the first time that it was, uh, yeah. and it and it uh, and and it it tickled and me it was, so I don't much. Know, I don't know if you watched. I don't think you watched it actually, but it was Malin and Malin who posted it to us. Mm. Um. But on the uh, oh, on the note of the Feddy, there is there is a, a thing I did want to uh, to talk about. Um, right, it's the the symbol, the symbol for the Fed of okay, symbol .info. That's the thing that I saw got got posted on the Feddy. It is. A manifesto 
to propose a symbol for the Fediverse, which is those three stars that you can see there. That is a u uh, the that's a Unicode character. Uh, it, I think it's called an asterism, and you can that's get to, get to it. It's supposed to represent asterism. asterism. I think that's how it's that's what I've written down, and you can get to it by doing Control Shift and U, and that means that you can then enter the Unicode two thousand and forty two. So I think so. If I do so, this, so in apparently the, it's like. It's official use, the, like the reason for mm -hmm. that symbol existing is in astronomy, it refers to a group of stars in the sky. I'm just reading from the site. Mm -hmm. And their problem, their problem with the like the default um, Spediverse, the current Spediverse logo or mm -hmm. symbol or whatever, which I'll put in chat there, is that that one doesn't look very good when you scale it down, which is true. It doesn't, it doesn't look very good at small sizes. Yeah. So I've thought about this more than I should have probably. <laughs> <laughs> and I've I've kind of worked out where I stand on this. On. That's a logo. That's not a symbol. The no the symbol the three star symbol. That's a great symbol. That logo is a great logo. The, I like. The, I don't there, think that's a particularly great logo. Honestly, I think I it's do. Kind of ugly. Love but it. I don't think there's a distinction between a symbol and a logo. Like, because the, the point is on websites where you have, you know, this is my, this is my YouTube, this is my Twitter, this is my, you know, the little bird. Mm -hmm. It used to be the little bird, obviously. Like that was a logo, but it worked well at very small sizes, and recognizable mm -hmm. and distinctive. Um, the YouTube, you know, all the other logos, they work good at small sizes. Whereas that, just being a bunch of lines that are all going at different angles, when you shrink it down, it just looks like a blurry nothing. And the stars would look better at smaller sizes. I'm fully in favor. I like. I prefer the stars to this. I don't particularly like. I don't hate it, but I don't particularly like this Fetty logo. Um, I like. I. I, like I, stars, I but I, well, I feel like it's it, it's not going to catch on. Like it's how is how is this because the Fetty because there's nobody there's no one person who can make the decision. Like mm -hmm. it's just not it's not going to happen. The, I mean it's it, it. Nor should there right. Like I'm totally in favor of this yeah. being a. A completely anarchistic free for all kind of everyone uses the logo they want to use, right? That's <laughs> kind of that's the anti corporate anti. How about we stop using logos and just use words? Well, so because the this reason is why these shitty small little, little fucking logos exist is because of shitty phones and touch, touch screen interfaces were a mistake. And when I'm king, they will be banned. So I have styluses it... again. But then again, so this is what I mean by the distinction between the logo and the symbol. So, mm. uh, so, so, like the at sign being like for email or the recycling. Like the thing is with the recycling, that's what they liken it to on the on the on the manifesto. The little the three arrows recycling uh, symbol. No one, no one. There's not like a re head recycling company, is there? Like it is. A, it is just the logo. The the recycling that is probably, that is probably standardized somewhere though, isn't it uh, yeah but we we know what it means um right, are we going to be like that like get me on three stars here and everything what the fuck are you talking about that what does that mean it, i mean obviously it's it it becomes um vin like uh, justified through common use right through you yeah uh so uh, like, I mean, at the end of the day, no one knows what, the, like, in terms of like people on the street, you go out, you talk and stuff. No one knows what the Fedverse is. Like, no, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what I do like about the previous logo is, you know, obviously it's got the rainbow uh, colors and, and With, the, the yeah, that's important. In there and, and I think the lesbian colors were in there and the bi, maybe. So that's that's showing, you know, our, you know, Feddy's inherent inclusion of. Uh, sexualities and also I assume it's got the you know the the pentagram because there seems to be a huge number of witches on the pentagram. Yeah, well. yeah, yeah. Like uh, which is that's cool, but yeah, and 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 the stars do lack that. They don't say anything specific, which is again very that is a very corporate way to lean. Like don't don't say anything, don't offend anybody. Uh, I think to me it works because it's like from a distance it just looks like computers connected together. Mm. From in a passing glance, it almost looks like a network logo or something like that. I, I do, I do like it. It's just aesthetically, it's it's very, it's very nice, simple, clean. I do like it. Um, but I hope it catches on. Am I? Does my argument between a, the difference between a logo and a symbol make any sense? 
I don't think so, unless I'm misunderstanding. I think a, a logo is a symbol. I don't think there's any, you know, it's a specific kind of symbol, but it is, it is, I don't think there's a distinction between a symbol and, unless you mean, unless you're making a distinction between a print, you know, because in a sense, that's a letter. That's a, a character that one can just copy mm. and paste. If you're making that distinction, then. it's. I mean, yeah. to me, those three stars, that is literally just a shorthand symbol for Fediverse. Mm. Whereas, uh, now, actually, that, that rainbow logo, Okay, I'm gonna. I don't know, right? I I would be interested to hear other feedback on this one, but I think there's a difference. So you know uh-huh. how the Meta and Facebook and, and Threads have their own logo for the the mm. uh, is it the Metaverse they call it or something like that? Um, but that 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 Threadsy thing that that has a logo. So there, the corporate Fediverse has a logo in the mm. in the one that 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 mark zuckerberg gave it so to me this logo the rainbow logo is the logo of the the sort of the community corner of the feddy the the mastodons the the comas the miss keys the peer tubes the stuff that's i don't want to say it's supposed to be here but it's native to yeah. the fediverse uh whereas obviously threads isn't threads is facebook that plugs into the feddy same thing with tumblr and wordpress and all that kind of stuff um, actually, I don't know about WordPress. WordPress to me is kind of the. F- I, yeah, it is the corporate side of the Fediverse, isn't it? WordPress? No, I, I would. It's an open source project, but it's a corporate thing. Yeah. In spirit, if nothing, you, you know, even yeah. But then, yeah. but then Tumblr, it then oh, Tumblr is still the corporate side. Yeah, yeah. Although um, I was reading this cool article um, the other day that the back end for Tumblr is actually going to become WordPress now. Now that WordPress has taken it over. Oh really? Yeah, they're going to ba- that It's going to be the end user. I would like, WordPress is an amazing product project that I wish would die. I think it's done mm. so much harm. It's 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 helped with the homogenous. It's helped with everything being dynamic for no fucking reason. You know, pers- people's personal blogs do not need to be dynamic, mm. um, and it's also homogenized the the web. I mean, I don't care. The web's dead, but it's it's helped to kill the web by homogenizing everything in terms of you know how it functions and how it looks. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I mean, it's and also. Yeah, I hate WordPress. I do hate WordPress kind no, of with the well, ventures. When I'm used to, when I do visit personal websites, you know, most mm. of the sort of people that that we know, you know, they use a static site mm. generator or, you know, in your mm. case, literally just static HTML. And it loads so fucking fast. And you go to a WordPress site and it is comparatively very slow. Yeah, but it, I mean, there's so much wrong with it as well. Even from the admin side of view, the, there are some websites who I help uh, other people with and they have the WordPress back end. And... Mm. It ch- it changes every single fucking time it updates. It feels well, like first thing if you want to customize anything, it's like you've got to either override the CSS to customize things visually, and you've got to override override PHP, and it's a fucking mess of PHP that project mm. um, in order to customize how something functions. And then every time it updates, it it breaks those overrides. So if you're maintaining a WordPress for somebody and customizing it in any way, it's an absolute fucking nightmare to work with. Yeah, yeah, and big and yeah heavy yeah it's uh, yeah but that um yeah anyway so <clears throat> so anyway there's the corporate fediverse logo this is like the 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 fun bit of the fediverse uh the you know it's like you know i mean i think the... what's likely to be used as, as to represent yeah. the fediverse almost everywhere is going to be the mastodon logo which is which i'm part it's a nice logo Well, yeah, but master, uh, uh, do you think that's how it w- will end? Like, oh, not will end, but do you think that's if where? We, if we're thinking in terms of people linking, you know, you, using it on their website the way they would use, you know, the Twitter mm. icon, you know, my Twitter is here kind of thing. Um, I think it's most people are going to be on a Mastodon instant, instance, so they're going to be, this is my Mastodon. They're not going to think, part of the problem is people don't. They might not be, they might be on threads. I don't, I don't, th- I don't consider threads to be metaverse, honestly. I know, uh, uh, sorry, Fediverse. <laughs> yeah, I, know it, I know it is. I know it. You know, it, 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 in a factual sense, it is. But it's not. It's not. Step aside, Mark Zuckerberg. We're taking over the metaverse. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If we could do a reverse takeover, that would be great. But and anybody yeah. who's using threads, or, I mean, I, I'm not going to um, federate with any threads instance. It's, so it's not. I don't care. I don't care about it. I I don't care about it. Uh, I usually like, am of the thoughts. I, Twitter, Tumblr. I think Tumblr's got a Tumblr's always had 
they're not my people, but it's always had a very community-driven feel to it. I know it's a corporation, but it, it does. It's it's got a distinct community, so I'll, I'm mm. I'm happy for for Tumblr to interact with us. But the others, as far as I I don't I don't care. Yeah, they're also kind of like I don't know. They're weird like us. I don't want to talk to the kind of person who's going to choose to be on Threads or Blue Sky over being on an actual Feddy instance. That's that's a big part of it, I think. That I mean, I think that's actually quite almost all of it, really. Is yeah. it's it's it okay? I don't want to sound like a NIMBY or a backyard like, <laughs> but like it, it. It's I think for me personally, and I know there will be a lot of people that may disagree. But the Tumblr people are not annoying in the same way that mm. Twitter people are annoying or that Threads yeah. people are annoying or that Blue Sky people are annoying. Well, Tumblr seems to be sort of a genuinely nerdy, you know, it's just all mm. kinds of nerds do like, you know, furries and people who are particularly into like a sci-fi series on DW from 20 years ago. You know, it's it's those kind of nerds and they're cool. They, they've had, they had their culture. It's always mm. been there and now they're plugging into ours, whereas... Threads, threads and Blue Sky, they're just attempts to, it's, you know, Twitter without Zuckerberg, which is, you know, Twitter before Zuckerberg was still a fucking shithole. Mm. <laughs> it's not like it was. Oh, no, you mean uh, Elon Musk, Twitter before Elon Musk. Who did I say? Uh, Zuckerberg. Zuckerberg. Yeah, 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 of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah no, it, Twitter was still a mess. Um, I mean, it's impossible to imagine what Twitter would be like without, without Elon, like, without, like, it would... What would it be like? It would just be some sort of media, but it would be LinkedIn, really. If if Musk hadn't taken it over, I reckon it would just move I mean, more it, and more. It, it, it would be what it was before. It would be a bunch of journalists and politicians echo yeah. chambering to each other and affecting the world more than they should. Yeah, um, but not a place I want any part of, and and so I don't care. You know, I just don't. I don't care. It's about just it. no. I mean, now it's just a freak show. Um, I don't think, I mean, the, the specific ways in which it has become much worse, like, you know, mm. I know for, you know, black people, any kind of marginalized pe people on there, it's become, you know, particularly bad now. But in, in, a, in a broader sense, I don't think it's mm. much different. It's still the same fucking place. More porn. Like, you can't scroll down without there just being a fanny in your face, really. It's just, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> he's I dropped I'm the ball on that thing. one. Yeah, yeah, it's. <laughs> I, yeah, it's just like I, I, I think firing half of those uh, engineers, like some oh, of yeah, them, were, all, all bad decisions. But what some of them were keeping is, the porn away. Not like I mean, my, not that I'm against. It's just like you know, what I mean. My point, my point is more. It's more. It's kind of like I think it is exactly this actually. That you know the way liberals liberals would bray about, like, you know, if Trump gets elected, America's going to be like blah. I mean, I'm talking in 2016, right? Mm. And then Trump got elected. Was America much different after Trump get, got elected versus Obama? Was it Obama before him? Whoever was mm -hmm. guy, right? It was Obama, right? Was America much different after Trump got elected? A little bit in some specific ways, but broadly, America was still America. Twitter is still Twitter under um, Musk. I don't, I don't think there's been as big a change as liberals like to imagine. I th I disagree. I think that that it was it was it, the thing is because it's it was trending downward for a while. Mm. You can kind of you can kind of like both claim. Uh, so it's like, I mean the 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 number of month the number of active users on it has fallen off a cliff. Like it, it, it it's just no. Not... I'm not. Even, I'm not talking about in terms. Of, I'm talking about what it fundamentally. Oh, is, what, it what it fundamentally is. is. And, and fundamentally, it's still exactly what it was before Elon Musk has taken over. It's just got new leadership and has been taken in on a slightly new direction. I don't, I don't fundamentally hate it anymore. Under I, I hate, I hate Elon and everything he does, and I hate mm. everything he's done as Twitter CEO because he's a, he's a right wing piece of shit. But Twitter was no less of a hellhole for me before mm. than than after. Like I, I've never wanted any part of it. It's it's a horrible, toxic, mm. disgusting place. Um. Yeah, I, I yeah, Elon Elon taking it over makes very little difference to my perception. I mean, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. It doesn't make it. It doesn't change the the outcome of the. Um, you know, in in the same way that America wasn't like a wonderful land of you know tolerance and um, egalitarianism and helping other countries out, and then Trump took over and it became you know mm. an imperial shit fuck. Um, it was it was that all the way. 
all the way through. <laughs> yeah. It's just now you've got an actual asshole in charge. Yeah. Same with Twitter. It's a shithole, and now it's a shithole with an asshole in charge. So obviously it's worse, but it's still fundamentally a shithole. Mm. Well, my opinion, and again, this one's a bit for Dago rather than Freebooters, is the the biggest problem with America is that you can easily get into a situation where the, the 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 system is at odds with itself. So, you know, you can have the lower chambers block what the president does and the president block what the lower chambers yeah, and then yeah. the Supreme Court yeah. just un, unravels all the, all of it in the end. It's the just like... balance of powers turned out to be, like, you know, not, not necessarily... Like, if, if, if any, if any um, what do they call them, like arm of the government can undo anything that any other arm does, then that's a recipe for getting fuck all done. Exactly, and it is like I mean, stuff everybody agrees on which is you know whatever the lobbyists want. Yep, yeah, bingo. Well, there you go. That and it's not even that complex. You know, like that's it. That's it in a in a nutshell. It is, it is, we are in. I mean, it, it's trite to say, but we we are in like the you know the sci-fi. Um, what's what's the term for a uh, when all the rich people are in, in a, plut a, pl a plutocracy? Right, we're in a mm. in a post-apocalyptic sort of. <laughs> horrible dystopian corporate uh, plutocracy and it's yeah unpleasant i've seen I, I i have was a little horrified to see apac go after uh you know like anyone vaguely pro palestinian uh, in the primaries for the democrat on the on all the senate yeah, reasons yeah. and things like that like it, the, well the thing uh, is that, that that is their job yeah but they, they just like they had like lasers like oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like yeah there were there that's were seats. Their they're, 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 they're seeing to their interests, and that that's their job within that system. And it's yeah, it like it is. Well. It 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 is the fact that that can even be allowed is mind boggling. It's just like, well, it's not. It's it's kind of neither allowed nor 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 not allowed. You know, you could equally set up a body doing the opposite. You know, as as a lobbying group or a think tank or whatever, doing the absolute opposite of what they're doing. But, but there's just no there's no interest who who has done that. You know, it could be done. Well, the moneyed um, interests are going to put their money where the moneyed interests are. Yeah, right? I mean, that is, the problem with that is that does very quickly get anti, actually anti-Semitic type thing that you know, you know, there's wealthy Jews who who want this, but they're all, you know, where are the wealthy blah blahs that want the opposite? Well, I mean, Elon Musk is the wealthiest of them all, and he he apparently, according to his daughter, has never never set foot in a church or nothing. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. he's. Uh, there's, Although there's the I don't think about uh, Lincoln, mm. uh, I don't know if it's correct. This is received from somewhere, but uh, Link Lincoln never never said a word about God uh, publicly mm. until he became president. Like you yeah. have, you have mm. to, you know, it's it's part of the part of the job. <laughs> it's yeah. to be but that was that was it, the the thing is right. So do you, so apparently in God we trust was put on the American notes in the nineteen sixties. Uh, if my off the top of my head trivia is correct. Um, so it's not like America has always been that gaudy of a country, although some people say it is. Like, this is like a long sort of historical debate. I think, because... I think we got trust uh, as, a, as a motto goes back somewhat longer, but there, there is the, what is the e Epluvium something something, many, many becoming one, or what is it? What's that? Is it, I, don't, oh, this, I don't know the Latin. No, it's like another motto. But um, e but yeah, there were there were e pluribus unum, uh, which means God damn it, I'm gonna click through. Out of many, one, and that was uh. uh It was put on the seal in 1782, uh, and then in 1956 it was replaced with "In God We Trust." It's right. Like okay. 56. So yeah, yeah. Um, so it, it it feels like the godiness was a was is a long and steady. Well, has always been well, there. It's, and, well, it, it's it's. I mean, changing the motto to "In God We Trust" is in breach of the separation church, church and state. And state. Like, Clearly, <laughs> but yeah, but yeah. The problem is nobody fucking cares at any point about the about the the constitution only applies when it's on your side, 
Right, and that, yeah. that applies to, across the political spectrum, which is exactly why I believe having a written constitution beyond a basic Bill of Rights is a, is a terrible idea. Mm. So a bill, so the the Bill of Rights would just secure, like, well, uh, conventional human rights type of thing, right? Yeah, yeah. I think yeah, having, uh, having, a bill of, having guaranteed human rights for people, uh, you know, enshrined in mm. the law, you know, un unchangeable, except, you know, by great effort is a good idea i think everything else is a bad idea because it just first of all it doesn't do what you want it to do mm. both sides cherry pick the parts that they agree with and ignore the other parts uh, and secondly it mm. becomes it just becomes fixed it's so it's so impossible to get it changed because again yeah. you've got these two opposing sides who want to change it in different ways um, but also the thing is with human rights is that historically it seems like human rights are typically very 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 difficult to gain but very easy to lose. So well, no. I, 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 again, enshrined enshrined human rights doesn't in 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 the end work very well. I mean, this is where this is where intersectionality and ultimately identity politics was born before it became the corrupt sort of bourgeois form of of, of um, progressivism that it is today. In the um, because uh, everybody in America, every person in America has has been equal under the law since the sixties, right? Since mm -hmm. the uh, Rights Act. Uh, w women got it a little bit earlier, and then you know people of color got it in in, in the yeah, uh, and then in the nineties, I think it was a Harvard professor who uh, I think it was intersectionality that he uh, sort of birthed uh, when he he quite he said if everybody's equal under the law, then why do people have different outcomes under the law based on their gender or sexuality or or or, or race, uh, which is a very valid question to ask. But but again demonstrates why guaranteeing these rights under the law isn't sufficient like it doesn't mm. actually do anything <laughs> well, it, what it's, about it's, necessary. it's a necessary component but it's not enough on its own yeah well what about like more like treaties and agreements i don't they... mean I, don't, I didn't mean intersectionality sorry i meant um it's great it's critical race theory as well it was that was, was born from that harvard professor who was asking those questions all oh, right okay yeah um but is like because obviously if if like you say with the government being able to undo its own stuff right so if you've got uh so the state is the would you say is the monopoly on violence as in like you know yeah in that in the, yeah so obviously like the the same institution that makes that that sets the basic human rights so that would, of course, obviously be things like right to life, but also right to dignity, uh, right to, you know, like various like rights under arrest and things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, um, generally things that it's just generally like a, a freedom from like corporal punishment or capital punishment. That's often, you mm -hmm. know, things like that. Um, is it like international treaties like uh european convention of human rights sort of make make it so that those human rights are decided by a body that's not the ones enforcing them that was i think a... that i think i think that's kind of uh, the only way it can work yeah i think mm. it worked very well under the eu actually i think that's one of the things that was good about the eu and and yeah. you know worth noting that uh, the irony that it was mm -hmm. the, it was basically the british who after world war ii drafted what became the ENCHR. Um, yeah. And then, you know, so many years later, <laughs> we just <laughs> rejected it for a second. I mean, another thing is, you know, after after World War Two, we designed Germany's political yeah. system. It was British political scientists who designed yeah. German's electoral system, which is better than ours. Like yeah. we designed a perfect electoral system and gave it to Germany, but didn't use it for ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, I think it's not perfect, but, you know, it's a lot better. Did we actually go through with coming out of the European Convention of Human Rights? I don't know, honestly. Also, we're getting a bit. We're getting a bit. Um, oh, we're day goth hour. Day goth hour. Right. Okay. <laughs> Linux. Uh, Linux. Okay. I do have a very technical thing that that that, that won't take too long. But I have been using Moji as my main search engine for a couple of weeks now, and I've got some reporting to do. Um, it's not terrible, but it is definitely like a step down in. Uh, so I, I assume the number of websites that it's crawled. It doesn't quite always give quite as good results as even something like DuckDuckGo, but it, but but it's not a million miles off. 
What, um, what is Mojik? Does it, does it use its own algorithm? Um, it uses its own algorithm and it scrapes. It, it 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 uses entirely its own. It's it's an independent search engine, so it's not writing off. Is it a for profit? Because I know I I did notice you retweeted one the other day, and I looked into yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. It's just it's for It's just the next Google if they're successful. It's that... sm it's a smaller. Um, I don't think it's like a non profit. I think it is just a mm. another uh n another one but the one that i think the thing i think is interesting partly that they're on the fediverse um and they actually they're like they're active there like i i've i've chatted to them and they say things and uh they're like uh, spiritually i think they're sort of on a similar page with the small web kind of thing um but really the interesting thing is like them they yeah there's they do have ad results, though, don't they? If it's the one that you um, retweeted the other, they do have ad results. So they've got the same sort of negative pressures. As, but hey, I, I don't, mm. uh, you know, before you get too into it, I don't really see the point of replacing one corporate search engine with another corporate search engine because they're going to have the same exact, you know, they're, they're only, the only reason they're better right now is that they're not big. Yes. Um, but also, I'm interested to see if um, it's one of those pieces of software or one of those things that is is kind of can only be done by by like a big tech by a microsoft by a mm, google right, or by an yeah, apple yeah. um because you know the bigger companies are dropping the ball in some ways with like a lot of this reliance on ai so it could be yeah. that this this might yeah. just be um a more conservative i mean before i've always back. um i've tried alternative search engines now mm. and then but the problem was that their results were always worse than google which mm. As much as I hate, you know, we of course we hate Google. Like you're going to generally use whoever's got the best results, and you know, does mm. does the job the best. Um, but Google has become so bad lately. Like it's 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 been going getting worse for decades, but maybe mm. not decades, but a decade. Um, but the results are as remember remember that remember back in the day before Google came where it was a thing mm -hmm. and we were at Alta Vista. I think was probably the most popular one before then. I was on Alta Vista, and the uh, results were. Yahoo? bad yeah it was yahoo altavista um a few others like and generally like you'd search for a thing and and it would generally generally what you wanted would be somewhere within the first three pages right yeah and then google came out and you search for a thing and the thing you were searching for 99 percent of the time was the first result and that was amazing mm. um and Go now now google is about as good as Alta Vista was before google came out <laughs> like it's <laughs> It's really fucking bad now. And to be fair to Google, it's not entirely their fault. It's because all this information is now in all the silos, right? The mm. information that you're Googling is either in Reddit, you know, less likely Facebook or Twitter or whatever. But yeah. Mm. Or um, Discord but even. It's hot. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's, it's sometimes outside of what Google can reach. Mm. Um, and also, so one of the things... Easier. I was, it would be easier for me now to switch because Google's not good. So yeah. Yeah, anything that barely serviceable would be... Viable. Yeah, yeah, I'm I not. I don't see the point of going to another corporate one, honestly. It's not. Yeah, like it's more of a a. Um, it's not a systemic um, solution. It is just a. Right. It's uh, almost. It's almost. Yeah. Like. From, yeah. It, it's it's almost like, is, is is a bit of a rewind in the technology. Possibly one of the ways to go. And like, so if you know the website specifically, so if I was, for example, looking up the Fediverse logo website. A website yeah. I I knew the keywords for, but and I know that it exists, but I can't just remember the URL. It's not bad mm. for that if you know. Okay. Uh, but it, but yeah, like to be honest, even things like DuckDuckGo, which I'm assuming are somewhat vaguely private enough, you know, for my uses, but they do use. Is it Quantcast Bing. or Bing or something like that? Yeah. DuckDuckGo uh, is, is bullshit. Do, all of DuckDuckGo's claims, I mean, you know, I'm probably going to, they, they're going to sue me over this. Complete mm -hmm. fucking bullshit. It's just fucking Bing. They're just proxying Bing. Mm -hmm. um, they give you better options. In terms of on their website, they give you more yeah. privacy options, sure. But that's just, that's such a small piece of what matters, such a minuscule piece of what matters. And they know that. So would, I mean, I don't even use Bing, uh, to be honest. Like, I well, I don't even, like, is DuckDuckGo more popular than Bing? Or, I, I don't know. Um, I mean, I, I use DuckDuckGo to me works kind of well enough. But also with, um, 
uh, Reddit in particular, because there is a lot of content on Reddit. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Google might be the only um, uh, search engine that can actually scan Reddit pages. I think That's they another made... problem now is yeah, they're doing doing they can just do deals with the big sites and say only you can index us because yeah, a lot mm -hmm. of the time if I'm searching, there's there's various kinds of searches, right? And the searches that no search engine is good at anymore is, is the very specific multi-keyword ones, mm -hmm. um, which Google used to be very good at, especially when you could still use the plus, which they got rid mm -hmm. of for that failed social network. Um, oh, yeah. yeah, Google Google was great then for very complicated searches. None of them are good at that now. So now when I'm mm -hmm. looking up specific technical information, I just add Reddit to the search because I know if I'm going to find it, it's going to be on Reddit. It's either it going to be mm -hmm. on one of those sort of questioning answery websites or it's going to be on Reddit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's Although that being said, I the thing I like about Mojik is that it doesn't have Reddit on it. It, it like it, it the slimness does seem to res, seems to it seems to direct, direct me more in terms of the uh, in the open web direction, or it it That's steers good. me That's more cool. towards websites than it does towards the silo That's stuff. Cool. Yeah. And that is one of the areas of improvement that I do think make it better. Whether or not that will continue, whether or not that will change because so of all these less, big silos. It's less what we use Google for, and it's more going back to like a way of exploring what's out there in terms of people's actual websites and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, I'll, I'll more, look up more like before we had search engines, we had di web directories. If, if yeah, you yeah. Like, it's a little, little, little bit more in, in that kind of ballpark. So, yeah, like it's definitely not a systemic thing. I think I did see on the Fediverse a an actual open source uh, search engine top to bottom. In, but I, the thing, the thing is with those ones is uh if they ever were to become successful the, could the could the algorithm be exploited on the, on the basis that it's you know open probably but, but the algorithm people sort of reverse engineer it anyway so does that really matter because there is there are search engines that are open and decentralized right was the rc was that one that might be one that's uh from way back but i do remember there were some that were open source and decentralized which which is nice that but they yeah the results were mm. never quite good enough yeah so i, I mean I, the thing is like i noticed that with like youtube like i think google has enough information on me to know what i like on youtube shorts it gets me down pretty well when i'm flicking through the youtube shorts it, it's got oh, a YouTube, mix yeah it's, yeah. it's recommendation to me on YouTube are very good. Yeah, um, it's it but really. Have you, have you ever dug in, you know the Google Ad thing, and you can there's somewhere where you can click, and it tells you what what it thinks of you, as in like whether you're married, how old you are, what your uh, income is, and that kind of thing. Oh, it's been a long time. Um, yeah, I should give that a because I, I I looked at mine. Uh -huh. It got something weirdly right, but it got a lot. Mm -hmm. Like I I think it thought that I was like a, a fifty something year old housewife with uh, like like four children or something like these are some of the things that i guess i can't remember specifically or something like that yeah yeah oh wow no i don't think so i think i think i might have seen that on twitter at some point and it vaguely got it kind of right but um it shows me stuff like like woodworking stuff and like just random craft projects and stuff like that and um you know what pisses me off on youtube lately yeah. is that they'll do this thing they'll replace the youtube logo with like the youtube logo plus a thing and it'll be like, a, and then mm. it'll be a full banner at the top, and it's like explore the world of like people who teach each other how to write novels on YouTube. And it's like, if mm. I was fucking interested in that, I would search for that. What What's the point of and advertising something absolutely fucking random at me? And, and I, I'm coming to resent that. It's it's irrational, but I'm coming to resent that more and more, and it makes me hate the group that's being advertised. It's, yeah, bring... it's more of that homogenization of YouTube of like the form is settled. Mm. Like every YouTube channel, regardless of whether it's about um, some science fiction show or knitting or whatever, mm. the YouTube show is going to look the same. Just the content is different. Cause that, that's will it, they will it be sponsored by NordVPN or Raid Shadow Legends? <laughs> Squarespace? Raid Shadow Legends. $1 shape. <laughs> Fucking Squarespace. Yeah. So the form will be the same. And that's depressed. I don't want to live in a world where YouTube is just a front end to. Mm. I don't know how to express it, but that's such a dull fucking world. The revolution will be sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. <laughs> um, have you ever played Raid Shadow Legends? 
Uh, before you go on, uh, this week's this week's um, uh, freebooters is brought to you by Raid Shadow Legends. Uh, if you would, like, I don't know anything. I can't even do the spiel fake because I don't no, know No, I don't have. I kind of don't want to. Like, I'm not installing it on a device that I tr that I need. But <laughs> so so I, I I but I'm. I, I'm, I keep getting this one because I've, I've told you because I'm using Cute Browser and and mm. and and Google is at war with ad blockers, so I'm, I'm actually getting ads now and then, right? And one of the ads I get on almost every video when I get an ad is it's it's an ad, it's an advert for some mobile game. I can't. It's got a very generic net. It's like called like mm. you know like Hero Quest. It's not Hero Quest. That was a board game, but it's something like very generic mm. like that. Kingdom right? Heroes. Every, every advert is like a cartoony little man, like a little a little fantasy warrior. Yeah, and a huge lady of some sort, and sometimes she'll be like a dominatrix demon. Sometimes she'll be like a you know a blonde princess on a throne, and she'll like mm -hmm. open her legs or something, and and then the little man will fall through a hole. It, like there's something very sort of like subdomi sexual about it, and and then and then it sort of shows you what the game is like. It's got this very weird like sexualized. Like I'm not being like we European, we're not Americans. We're okay with 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 sexual sexuality. It's not that, but it's such, such a weird because it's got this very kiddie kind of feel. Uh, yeah, it's yeah, yeah. Like, it's really odd, really fucking odd. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I uh, has if anyone here has actually played Raid Shadow Legends, let, yeah, let us know what it is. Let us know. Isn't it going to be wild when like the AI slop is going to reach like video games and apps where you can literally, I know you can already oh, yeah. do coding, but it's like, make <laughs> no. me a game where you're just, <laughs> and it's going to have this horrible, like slop of. Actually, when, when, when chat GPT was first sort of being talked about and stuff, I did, uh, I was talking to Falcon. She was doing, uh, they were doing their homework. Uh, Cause they were, they were doing like mm. comsci and, and their, their, their uh, task, their homework task was to make, um, make a sort of a, a text adventure RPG game with multiple rooms mm. in Python. And I was just curious, like, could, Jack, could chat GPT do, do this if I just, you know, type in your homework assignment, basically? And chat GPT mm. gave me a Python game. Uh, and structurally, it made sense. It was a bunch of rooms. Mm -hmm. uh, it was like seven rooms, and you could go from room to room and pick up objects and stuff, right? Except that it had only made a door between rooms one and two. <laughs> <laughs> so you get to the other. I had to look at the code to see why this game was so small, and yeah, it only it forgot to connect up the other the other five rooms. Which is, I think that's that's indicative of the kind of thing we're going to get. You know? Yeah, but then you know we've had we've had asset flips on Steam and all that kind of stuff as well. So it's not you know these are battles that we face. I mean, not, ninety. No, that's probably over the top. But like a good a good half of of all games because there's so many fucking games on Steam now or or anywhere. Like mm. half of it is worthless slop. Either yeah. way, I remember when there were. It was a big deal we made when there were two thousand games available on Linux. Now, <laughs> yeah. or, or something, something to that effect. Right now, according to like the Steam Deck statistics or something, there's like thirty thousand or sixty thousand. I don't even know ones that are officially sort of tested. Like I would imagine, like it's like all but three work on linux at this point you know what i mean it's, it's the ones with yeah. the uh what's it called the multiplayer what's the term yeah. oh anti-cheat anti yeah. yeah 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 basically any anything that's not anti-cheat it like the number has ceased to have all relevance right like yeah like, a, you know, a couple I love... of years ago a couple of years ago when, when proton was normalized and it mostly worked i would i would look at a game i'll go i fancy that game i'm gonna buy that i'll check proton db if that's okay, then I'll buy the game. Now I don't mm. even buy. I just buy the game, assuming it's going to work, because I can't remember the last time one didn't. Uh, some of the racing games, but you've but since you've put me on to Flat Out Two, <laughs> which works beautifully, which works beautifully. I love that Flat Out Two has got all the same bugs that it had on Windows. That's amazing. But also Flat Out Two uh, installs and runs on Linux like it did for me. Zero, um, you know, platinum, yeah. platinum level. Uh, but didn't didn't you don't you know people who have it or have Windows that tried to install it and had problems? My niece, yeah, it just won't it just won't run on Windows eleven. And I googled it, and it's a common thing, and you have to you have to fuck around quite a lot to get it working on Windows eleven. Yeah, same thing with Deus Ex: Invisible War. That like I think, yeah. and a lot of these, I think it's quite a few yeah. games, yeah, quite a few games that struggle on Windows ten, Windows eleven, but just work flawlessly on Proton. I feel when that happens, I feel unreasonably smug. 
Yeah, yeah, totally. But then the thing is with me is that, um, like, I don't play modern games. So no. even from a gaming point of view, Linux is my best shot, is the best, complete, mm. pragmatic, best operating system. I, that relates to, I mean, this is a Linux thing, and I, I sort of uh, teased it last week. I'm just bored of modern, even indie games now, because indie mm. games now aren't really indie games. They're all like just mini studios. So like, and they've you know become conservative in the way that big studios were, which indie was a reaction to. So all modern games now, obviously this is hyperbole, but all modern games now are fucking boring, and that's part of. So my little my little toy came. Mm-hmm. My little and actually when it boots up, it's kind of nice, right? So it says uh, mm-hmm. I don't know if you can read that. There's uh, mm-hmm. me, oh, on, Mio, but it says uh, Linux gaming or something like that. It mentions Linux Ooh. right on the right on the first That's screen. Good. So yeah, there's my little my little in, little interface. That's so I can go to I can go to my game. So yeah, but my point is, so new games are shit. So I'm going back to old games and seeing if any of them are good. There's um, mm-hmm. Tactics Ogre or Ogre Tactics. I'm giving that a go and I'm enjoying it a lot. So I'm, go- I'm going. I'm going to look for all the old games that were good that I missed, and I'm going to play them. And mm-hmm. I, I could play them on my PC, but there's something nice about having like a little self-contained thing that I can just, you know, relax with and and play old games. And mm-hmm. no nostalgia. I don't have nostalgia. Even even the games that I played back in the day, I don't want to play them now. They were rubbish, like by modern mm-hmm. standards. Uh, but I'm, I, there has to be good old games that I've missed, and I'm going to go back and play some of them. Yeah. No. Absolutely. I. Like, this um... is like, yeah. This... Fucking thirty quid. Uh, came with an That's SD card. 30. Everybody recommends to replace the SD card that you get because it's not very good. But it comes with an SD card with twenty five thousand mm. games on it, which oh, is wow. obviously deeply illegal. <laughs> but they, just, <laughs> they, just, they don't care. It's China. They they distribute the thing with twenty five thousand games on it. Yeah, uh, I replaced because uh, Andrew warned me. Andrew said like they, they, there's going to be so many duplicates and like misnamed things and like you should probably, yeah. So I downloaded yeah. a curated set of ROMs from somewhere. Um, but yeah, 30 quid, 25,000 games out of the box. Uh, came from, from China in five days. It's, yeah, recommend. That's amazing. I mean, me, I presumably... Me, 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 what, from China in five days? From China in five days, yeah. Literally, um, like, because a very detailed Chinese tracking site as well. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it was, it was on the plane within the first day of me ordering it. This is well, well. And it, yeah, came came by plane. That's yeah. amazing. That, yeah. yeah, I mean, I'm a little bit similar. Uh, uh, in the... Also, free postage. That's amazing. <laughs> Five days. Someone, I mean, that's... In, I, environmentally, that's a fucking disaster. Someone but... died to get you that. That's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I'm a bit like that with um game. Like I like game jam games a little bit. You know, yeah. like. Yeah. And and just browsing the weird corners of itch because mm. that's like what because my you know my my thing is like I like it when there's a mechanic and that mechanic that is the game right like I like mm. games yeah, that yeah, yeah. around sure. so you that's quite a common thing in in um in in game jam games where they've just done a few levels around they've they've got a, they've they've developed their like gameplay loop and they've just given you a few levels to to run around it really and I kind of like that yeah. and I don't. Because to me, it, it it's like also because it, it it I can play a little bit of a game and then I can just move on to the next game and the next game and I know it sounds it's games as an experience right like I know that's like me trying to sort of sell games as a service but it's like I'm going to play this game for a couple of hours and I might not well, ever no, come no, back it's not, yeah no it's not like a, an experience in that it's it's like games as a buffet right yeah 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 like, games like, as a buffet. Like, Bottles that do one one thing perfectly and like that was great. Now the next one kind of thing. That's not how I know that's how you get. I don't game like I I want to mm. I want to sink into a game for hundreds of hours. But you're more like I want the perfect expression of this idea. And yeah, then I want to move on. Yeah, yeah. Games as a buffet, that's that, yeah, or as an yeah. amuse bouche or something like that. You know, <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that's <laughs> what's that's the mouth, what's the mouthfeel of this game. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Like it's that's it. Like, what is the the? How do you feel when you play this game? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. that's kind of what it what it what it is in a lot of cases. Like with like even with Open Transport Tycoon Deluxe, I like the the the, the just the satisfaction the feel of having like the little network like that. Yeah, it's a feeling yeah, yeah. that is just like. Um, that but is, yeah, that, we, is, that is 
that is the thing that old games did better. Yeah, they did concentrate more on even the even the, the big games because Open TTD is a very big game. Mm. But it, but it, but it had one thing that you do. It's about whereas if they made that now, there'd be like more of a managerial side and mm. more of like hiring and fire, you know, all this, all the superfluous tangential stuff that I don't that always ruins games for me. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Like, too like much all, you know, football games, as in you know soccer or football games. It's just like you play like you know like uh, sensible soccer and uh, kick off, uh, kick off, kick off and give two. Um, you just play the game, and now, like, if that came out, it would have a, like there's games like that on Steam now. But it's like it does that, but it's also got the management part. It's like, well, no, I just wanted that fucking part. Like, don't give me the fucking management part on top of that. I don't want to. And, and the management, management game, I play a fucking management game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I went through when I was quite young. Had never was never the biggest football fan, but re- went through a, a phase of football manager enjoying the football <laughs> yeah, manager I think games. A lot of did, right. I never went back to that since I was absolutely tiny. But I really like. I don't know, like. Yeah, that's I don't know. Maybe oh. I, know, I know a lot of people, like nerdy people, who no interest in football, but went mm. through a spell. Yeah, a couple of years of playing the shit out of Football Manager. And what's really interesting to me is it didn't foster an interest in football. Mm. That's the really interesting part of it for me. It didn't make them in any way curious about football. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Because it's a statistics game. It's a spreadsheet game. Yeah, yeah. It, the foot, the football is just the it. You know, like the yeah, yeah, yeah. It, 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 it it's. The thing is, as well with it, is um, uh, with uh, oh god, uh, oh they um, I did notice. That I'm kind of surprised that I never went back to that trend because there are quite a lot of like football management games that were the natively work on Linux, and yeah, you can you, you obviously you can work out why quite easily because they're they're not particularly complicated games. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I always feel like as a long-standing like ally to Linux. It's it's weird how more of us haven't actually picked them up. Like it's <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like they are kind of the nerdiest. The football management games really are kind of the nerdiest games that there are. And it's and it's kind of weird that you don't hear more about it on like the Feddy or anything like that. Which is... yeah, they are like you say they are they are literally games made of spreadsheets. Mm. And um, like it, it's like I remember when Borderlands Two was big in the Linux community because it was one of the earlier well-known games to actually get a native linux release itself i bet i know more linux users that rem- rem- remember that sort of time of the the borderlands 2 than any of the football manager you know official games mm, for sure yeah I mean, it's not a bad game but it's not a game i would necessarily pick up if it wasn't one of you know yeah. i'm i yeah. in some ways i do kind of miss the days of ch- limited choice um you know, I've, when, I've been thinking that increasingly. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. Go on. I mean, I say that you know, in one breath I say games is a buffet, but in another breath I say, well, this is too many, too many games. <laughs> well, when you, I mean, this is this is well trodden ground, I think. But like when mm. you had few, you know, back in the day with kids growing up, I had I had an Atari ST, I had a Commodore sixty four, and then an Atari ST, and I could afford. I'd get I'd get a game for Christmas, and I could afford during the course of the year I could afford maybe one or two games right as a kid. Mm. So that's that's about three games a year. Uh, so first of all, you were very careful about what you bought, and secondly, mm-hmm. like you milked every drop of enjoyment out of those games that you possibly could. You didn't. Whereas mm-hmm. now, I'll pick up a game. I'll pick up a game on Steam for like you know seven pounds, and if it doesn't grab me within three seconds, I'm like, oh, it's boring. I'll come back to it later and never come back to it. You know. Mm. Yeah. It, and 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 boy, would you get every drop of enjoyment out of the shareware CDs as well? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> that where they, they, but see, that is for me, right? In terms of the, it's one of the few ways that I still buy games that I don't know about. Uh, the other being word of mouth, you know, uh, mm. like. But mm. um, there have been a small handful of games that, because they've given me a free sample, as it were, have. Mm. I yeah, that's by that's the highest conversion rate of all right. You give me a few levels to know if I like I like the gameplay loop and and you know I'll put, I'll put I, the money I've down. More and more games on Steam are doing demos. Um, mm. There is somebody somebody on um, Feddy noted this and I agreed. A lot of them are releasing the demo as if it's a game in unto itself and calling mm. it like t- title of the game like prologue, mm. um, which is a bit a bit cynical. But I get like it's very hard to get noticed on Steam. I don't begrudge them that. I'm fine with them mm. putting a, dem- a demo out as a, you know, a free game. And uh, yeah, I've been, I've been playing demos, and uh, yeah, it's kind of it's kind of nice to play demos and get like proper because mm. demos. Some of them make the mistake of giving you too little. 
Mm. Some give you too much and you only need the demo, but like some give you too little. You've got to, you've got to have a proper like uh yeah taste of the game. And yeah, I've been I've been playing mm. a bunch of demos and bought bought a couple of games uh, from that actually. Mm. I mean, my my spicy hot take is that the original Wolfenstein 3D game, the the demo was was plenty enough for the game of the like you had like was it eight chapters or whatever and no one i know played past chapter one which was and they gave you the whole of chapter one as the shareware demo. But you've had enough at that point yeah 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 that you can play through that that is easily like um six to eight hour game which is a perfectly good length for a yeah, game yeah. yeah i don't know why was, you know like a funny example of that stop me if i've talked about this before on, on when we've been recording but um delta force 2 Mm -hmm. Which was the first FPS that I seriously played. It was a, it's a, it's a military uh, online multiplayer. Uh, it's got a single player campaign, but it's mo mostly about the multiplayer. But the mm -hmm. demo of that uh, ha had had everything that was in the main game in, in terms of the multiplayer. You could play on any multiplayer game. Mm -hmm. You were just limited to uh, like three or four weapons rather than fifteen, right? Mm -hmm. But because of that, the game had better balance. Like the additional weapons yeah. actually made the multiplayer game worse, so a lot of people just played the demo. We we all owned the full game, but we mainly played the demo because it was a better game. And you could load all of the maps in. You could just like stick them in the folder mm. and load all of the maps in. So there was a huge community who just played the demo online. Yeah, and actually, one of one of my favorite games of all time, Don't Starve Together. It's still being updated, and I kind of don't really want need them to add more and more stuff in at this stage uh, yeah the, the the game itself is kind of like getting too big and changing too much like you've done it mm. you know like yeah. i pr yeah. and i appreciate that it you know like you don't have to do the work right mm. but they've changed up the the farming mechanics and they keep yeah. adding new no, characters I think what happens like, yeah say it's, say it's a game you've not played for a few months and and like oh I fancy playing you know you know don't starve say yeah I fancy playing don't starve and it's like oh but so much has changed and I'd have to learn it all and like so I'm not going to bother mm. like I, I get a lot of that with so, games yeah yeah, yeah it, it's I I get that there's quite a big community that they want to keep I mean you don't pay a subscription you literally just buy the game so I don't even know why yeah yeah. That I mean, I, we're not, we're not, we're not, you know, being down on the devs for keeping their game up today. It's great that they keep adding stuff, you know, for the people who want to keep playing it. But are absolutely, people, are people still buying it? I guess they must be. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's just I for 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 us casuals, it's just like they're doing a lot of work that doesn't seem to. Yeah, may, that's, maybe that's they're a problem in, in general. This is a particular problem with RPGs and roguelikes. I think when they do early access. And obviously, on their on their forums, the uh, the most hardcore players are going to be the most vocal, and mm -hmm. they just want more. They're like, I've completed it like fifteen times. I need it to be. It's too easy. Make it harder. Make it harder. Make it harder. So these mm -hmm. games keep getting fucking harder and harder and harder. Which means that anybody like anybody like me who just buys it at release or buys it late in early access, the, the, the game's fucking impossible at that point. Yeah. There was one called um, it was something tact crawl tactics. Uh, and that very much suffered from that problem. Like it just, it, mm. it was too hard to begin with, and then all the hardcore fans just kept asking them to make it harder, and they responded to that, making it harder and harder. Mm. And they've actually re recently released a patch to make it easier because they sort of realised that they were catering <laughs> to like one percent of their audience, and like everybody else was being put off by that. So that's kind of interesting. Yeah. Uh, interestingly enough, actually, the one gaming community that I have absolutely really enjoyed lately is the project zomboid community um i i don't really you know like i'm not very vocal there but i do sort of read up on some of the community memes and that kind of yeah. stuff and it seems like it's a very wonderful like f just from from what i've seen so far quite a wonderfully like inclusive and non-elitist kind of yeah 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 i think that's uh, right yeah, yeah. I, I, I think like somebody commented on our video like mm. i think there's a maturity and again not necessarily about age it's about emotional mm. maturity i think there's a maturity to the audience with that game because of the kind of game that it is on yeah. the other hand like, I, I enjoy Zomboid. I played Zomboid with you. I played it with other people. Mm. I enjoy Zomboid. It's a very good game. But, but there is no excuse for the state of that game, given how long it's been in development. There's no fucking excuse for that. For that fucking UI and control mechanism, there's no fucking excuse for it. The UI is hilariously bad, but you can see that they've put all of their time and effort into other bits. <laughs> yeah. Or, yeah. Or that yeah. they've gotten so used to it that they can't change it. Like, like 
Yeah, that's yeah. fair. Yeah, but the number it, of times I die, and it, it really matters when you die in that game, right? Mm. The number of times I die because my character's facing one way when it should be facing the other way, based on you know what what I think it should be facing the other way, and it's like it's so mm. incredibly crazy. Yeah, but good game though. <laughs> Great game. Good Love game. It. Good community. Yeah. Right. Should we uh, wrap it up there? Yeah. Yeah. We can do that. Yeah. It sounds good to me. And, uh... Cool. Well, thank you for joining us, everybody at home. Uh, thank you for the lovely comments you spent you sp- spent your time spending on us <laughs> last time. <laughs> <laughs> and, thank you. Um, for the, 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 I can't even. Yeah. And um. Yeah. All right. See you next time, and leave lots of comments. Okay.